What I'm going to do is show you the most commonly used or commonly utilized bandaging techniques for the arm so that you can better utilize them at home. First order of business is to have your supplies ready. So in the case of the arm, we're going to use the stockinette foam and then whatever three layers of bandages we've, de we've determined were necessary for your care. The most important thing to have ready when you're bandaging is of course your tape. So have your tape all cut and ready to go. So the first step when putting your multi-layer bandaging on is to of course rinse off your skin with a low pH soap. Secondly, you want to make sure you put on a low pH lotion, which will absorb quickly. The first layer we're going to put on there then in the bandaging, multi-layer bandaging sequence is stockinette. It's a non-elastic stockinette, helps absorb perspiration. This is going to extend from the hand, and there's a little thumb hole there, all the way up to the armpit. I'm going to leave a little extra at the top and a small amount of distance at the bottom because the second layer is going to be foam. Once the foam is placed, we want to protect the ends of the foam with that extra length. Now the foam band is a foam that's got some stretch to it and we protect the ends of that foam with a little bit of tape because it's very easy to tear. There's a thumb hole placed here for Cindy. So what I'm going to do is start on the small finger side of her hand. I'm going to hold it down there with one hand as I bring that roll around. I'm going to secure that end underneath my roll and continue up the arm. As I'm wrapping that foam, a couple things to note. I'm overlapping that foam halfway over the previous layer and I'm giving it a little bit of tension to help take up the slack. If you've wrapped that foam and you find that there's an area that's puckering and not laying down flat, you want to make sure you go back, that, go back and rewrap that. The other thing to remember is, I'm, is to keep your foam layer on top like a snail. If that foam layer is down below and you're unwrapping it that direction, you're going to give yourself some uneven compression. I'm going to continue with that foam all the way up until I get up to Cindy's armpit. It's always best to put the bandages on when you have a sleeveless shirt or a tank top on so that you can really visualize where that armpit ends. The foam I'm going to take clearly up to that armpit and over the top of her shoulder. So you can see I've secured or reinforced the end of my foam just to minimize any ripping or tearing of that foam. And the other thing I'm going to do is place a couple layers of tape down on the foam itself. This gives me sort of a runway of sort to put the last piece of tape on. So when you take the bandages off, you're actually just going to take off this top piece of tape so as not to rip the foam. Once the foam is in place and secured at the end, I'm going to overlap that little bit of stockinette that I have there. Not only overlap it at the top, but overlap it at the bottom. And again, that just helps to protect that foam as you're using your hand during the day. So the first bandage layer that we're going to use is a minimal stretch bandage. The minimal stretch bandage is different than an ace wrap. That's why we have chosen this for you, because it's woven in multiple directions, which means that when I stretch it, it's not going to stretch or double in length. An ace wrap, however, if you stretch an ace wrap, you can actually double its length. So this is going to provide an even compression for you. We're going to start at the small finger side of the hand. I'm going to take the end and secure it down on Cindy's pinky side of her hand. As she spreads her fingers apart, that helps to keep some of the pressure from getting too tight around those knuckles. I'm going to overlap it a little bit there so that it doesn't get too tight on that thumb. And once I get that end secured, I'm going to come down, down to the base of her thumb and then back around. I'm going to bunch it up just a little bit in there so again it doesn't bother her thumb. And I'll go ahead and make a fist. And then I'm going to just continue up the length of Cindy's arm. I'm overlapping halfway over that previous layer. I'm trying to keep my roll nice and close to the foam because if I get out here too far, I'm going to provide her with uneven compression. So I'm going to keep it rolled up pretty close. I've got some, a little bit of tension on it, so I'm taking up the slack. And I'm also trying to keep that roll on top of the layer I'm applying. Again, so we can keep it even compression all the way up the arm. If you've got a small arm, it'll run out probably mid to upper forearm. And sometimes it runs out right at the elbow itself, at the elbow joint. It's always good to end either above or below the elbow so that it doesn't get too bulky there. 
Once I get that layer on there, and go ahead and rest up, I'm going to take a clip to secure it. And the clips are shallow enough so that they won't get through the foam and puncture your skin, so they're safe for you. And then I'm going to take a small piece of tape to secure that clip down. The second bandage that we're going to use is another minimal stretch, but a little bit wider. What we're going to do with that one then is start on the thumb side of the hand. So that first layer I wrapped in what would be counterclockwise for me as I'm looking at Cindy's arm. The second layer I'm going to wrap so that it's going clockwise. Again, it's all about keeping that compression even. So I'm going to secure the end down right at her wrist level here. Once I get this little end secured underneath the layer, I'm going to take that top corner and overlap it. The reason for that is I don't want that end sneaking out down below and unraveling the entire layer of bandage. I'm going to overlap halfway over the previous layer, keeping the bandage roll close and keeping that roll on top as I'm unrolling it. I try to keep my overlaps nice and parallel so that they're, that they're parallel to the wrist. Again, it's all about providing even compression. I'm pulling a little bit just to take up the slack but not so tight that it's cutting off circulation. I'm going to end way up at Cindy's armpit. As you can see, and I don't want that end to be too far behind so that Cindy can't undo that layer. So I'm going to overlap that little bit so that we end out here on the outer part of the arm, of the upper arm, which provides for a little easier access to that end. Secure it with a clip and then a couple pieces of tape. That third and final minimal stretch bandage is going to be just a little narrower than that last one that I used. Thinking about the direction that I'm going to roll it, that first layer, remember, was what would be counterclockwise, and I started at the small finger side. The second layer was clockwise, starting at the wrist. This third layer, I'm going to start up about mid-forearm, and I'm going to go back to my counterclockwise direction. Again, this helps to really provide with nice even compression all the way up the arm. I'm going to dog ear that top corner so that that end doesn't come undone. If that end comes undone, that whole layer is going to probably unravel. I'm going to overlap halfway over the previous layer, keeping my lines parallel to her wrist giving it just a little tension to take up the slack. And I'm keeping that roll on top. If by chance you end up with not having enough of this at the top to end at the top, like if I were to end here, I would unwrap that layer and start over. We're going to end up right here, which is perfect. So I'm going to come around that armpit. I don't want this end to end way in Cindy's armpit. So I'm going to overlap that top, that last little bit, last few inches, so that that end ends on the outside. I'm going to clip it or secure it with a clip. Two, because it's the last layer, and then a couple pieces of tape. And it's always a good idea to move around a little bit once you get that wrapped, just to see that it's going to feel a little bit restrictive, but you should, still should be able to do your normal activities with it on. If you're going through your day and it starts to feel like it is too tight because of your activity, you may indeed take off that third bandage layer. That would leave you with bandage layer number two and number one. After a couple of hours, however, I would put that third bandage layer back on so that you get the best possible compression from your bandages.